Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bob Dole, president of Solution Driven Wealth. Today, we want to take some time out to really talk about some legislative changes that will impact the estate that you leave to your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren, and or your heirs. Our most important message to you is always that our main concern for you is the health and well-being of your family and your friends. We at Su Solution Driven Wealth are deeply committed to your success and always able to answer any and all of your questions. You know, the SECURE Act passed in 2019 during the Trump administration. And again, the, two, the SECURE Act 2.0 passed just this past year, addressed many of the deficiencies in the retirement system that we have with us today. However, specifically, we're going to address the impact to your estate. That's the estate that you leave to your children, your grandchildren, and or your heirs. This affects your qualified assets. And when we say qualified assets, we mean your IRA, your 401k, your SEP IRA, your 403b, which is a tax sheltered annuity done for many hospitals and nonprofits such as teachers have. This is where the vast majority of our clients' wealth may be held and will leave a lasting impact in a negative situation to your estate. The key points to note about the SECURE Act and the impact to qualified assets is that for non-spouses who inherit these assets, the legislation states that they must now completely exhaust the account within a 10-year time span. It's also stated that not only do they have to exhaust the account, but they now have to take out distributions on an annual basis based on their own age or life expectancy. It's estimated that about 30% in taxes will be paid both at the federal and state income level combined. It could, in fact, be a little bit higher than that if legislative changes occur in the coming years. Additionally, no penalties are required or will be paid for those distributions not paid by accounts received between 2020 and 2022. However, the law does go into effect this year. So if you did inherit an IRA, it is mandated that you take a distribution this year based at least on your own life expectancy. So now that we have outlined the problem and the issue facing your qualified assets, you have really three options that we view. One is to do nothing. You know, you've worked your entire life to accumulate these retirement assets. And frankly, you may feel that whatever your kids or your heirs receive is certainly more than enough than they're entitled to. You know, um, in fact, you may want to spend the last nickel that you earned during your retirement. And that's fine. That's one strategy. However, if you feel differently, if you feel like you'd rather not the federal government or state government to be a partner in your IRA assets, and you really want to leave as much of a legacy to your children and grandchildren and or heirs, then there are some strategies that we want to consider. One is a Roth conversion, and you do this while you're certainly alive. And we would evaluate with your tax professional the best strategy to partially convert some of these assets to Roth, because once those assets are converted into a Roth IRA, um, the taxes are negated. There's no taxes due on those assets. So partial Roth conversions can make a lot of sense. After that, we may want to consider using life insurance. That's existing life insurance that you have to offset the income taxes due by heirs. So you could change the beneficiary of these uh, of your life insurance policies to to your children or grandchildren, or even put that into a trust to pay for those estate taxes. Now, there can be a substantial improvement to your legacy that you leave loved ones if you develop this strategy. In fact, you may actually want to consider a new life insurance policy based on both the life of the individual owner and or their spouse. We call this a joint life or survivor life policy. This was a strategy that was deployed many years ago bef before the estate tax was substantially increased. And we we're actually going back to some old strategies and old solutions to really preserve our clients' estates with this new legislative changes that have occurred. So let's show an example of a $2 million qualified IRA account that was inherited um, just in 2023. So as we know, heirs could uh, begin to take this out each year. All we've done in this instance is shown the IRA assets coming out proportionally each and every year over a 10 year period. And we assume that those assets by the heirs are earning about a 4% rate of return net. We also assumed in the other column 
that the combined federal and state income taxes due are approximately 30% combined. So when we get the assets coming out, approximately $259,000 is distributed, $77,000 is going to federal and state income taxes, leaving $181,000 to the heirs. At the end of the 10 year period, we've paid nearly approaching $800,000 in federal and state income taxes, leaving our heirs with about $1.8 million remaining out of this estate. Granted, it grew over the 10 years, but look how much has been lost to taxes. Really substantial reduction. In this example, we're showing a, the use of life insurance, and it may not apply to everyone, but this is simply an example showing how we might use it creatively to pass on a larger legacy. In this instance, we've used a second to die life insurance policy. That's a policy issued on both lives because there's no forced liquidation when a spouse receives an IRA asset. The clients have paid $10,692 a year for 10 years. That's a 10 pay policy. And, it, and it's for $630,000. We came to that calculation because we thought that would be the taxes due on the estate. In this instance, that money has been invested. And then we're siphoning out each and every year the income taxes due and payable by the heirs on the estate. So there's been no Roth conversion in this circumstance. We're simply showing using life insurance to mitigate the loss of the estate. In this circumstance, we paid about a total of $128,000 of premium, so it certainly wasn't free. That injection of capital at the opportune time has allowed the heirs to receive almost $650,000 more than they would have received without using life insurance. So in this circumstance, a very powerful use of a creative product worked for these specific clients. Now, it may not work in every instance, and we would discuss that with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So what we wanted to do here is just simply recap what we discussed today. First, the SECURE Act encompassed many legislative changes relating to retirement, but specifically as it relates to your retirement assets, there's some issues with this. It's changed dramatically what you can pass on to your heirs and loved ones. That's the problem. There are potential solutions. First, you don't have to do anything. You can do nothing, and then your heirs will receive whatever your net estate is left after they've paid the estate tax or income tax on those distributions. Or there's potential solutions. One would be some raw, partial Roth conversions, potentially, after you've evaluated each respective tax bracket of the owner and or the heirs with your tax professional. And we would do that with you, of course. And then lastly, you may want to consider using life insurance creatively to mitigate some of the income taxes due and payable by your heirs. So again, these are important issues to discuss with you. Everyone's situation is unique and different and we wanna respect that. Please reach out to us to discuss this matter further. We'll, we'll be discussing this in our next review calls as they occur throughout the year and discuss solutions in your unique circumstance. Thank you again for your time today and have a great finish to the week.